Okay, so I would like to give you a quick overview of uh, how to set up a discussion forum activity in Moodle, what uh, some of the different discussion forum types are, and what some of the main uh, settings options are. So I've got editing turned on, you can see. Um, to add a discussion forum, you clearly need to decide what section of your Moodle course you want to add it to. I click Add Activity or Resource. Um, you can select the forum activity and Moodle will give you a brief description of um, you know, how discussion forums work. Click Add and you will be taken to the settings page for the forum. Um, first thing we're going to do, I'm going to uh, expand all of the settings categories so we can take a look at them. You need to give your discussion forum a title. This will show up as a link on the front page. And the description of the forum is not required, but um, it uh, will be something you want to put in for most of the different kinds of discussion forum types. It'll either be the initial prompt or it'll be the directions for how you want your students to work on the forum. I'm just going to put in something here. Um, the key thing here is to decide what kind of a discussion forum you want. And the default is the standard forum for general use. Um, this is a flexible kind of generic uh, discussion forum type. Uh, but it's not necessarily the best discussion forum type for the um, for the substantive discussions you want to have in your course. With the standard discussion forum type, you're basically creating a container, um, the discussion forum activity, and then within that activity, anyone in the course, you, your students, can start discussion threads as many as they want and then anyone can go into any of the threads read what uh, has been posted there and hit replies that is um, a good format for something like the general uh, course discussions forum that uh, I suggest you um, set up for your course but it's not necessarily the best kind of discussion for um, exploring different topics in the course. If you look in this pull down menu, you can see there are actually five different kinds of discussion forum activities in Moodle. In addition to the standard forum, what uh, you will probably use most often for your course discussions are either a single simple discussion or a Q&A forum. At least that's my experience. With a single simple discussion, uh, this removes the ability for people to start separate threads. Basically, all of the discussion takes place within a single thread in the discussion forum. Everyone participates by replying to previous uh, discussion um, activity. And your forum description up here basically becomes the prompt that starts the open-ended discussion. Uh, as I just indicated, this is a uh, an effective kind of discussion format for when you want to have an open-ended discussion about some topic. Uh, you don't want to have this kind of a discussion forum topic for uh, discussions where there's a you know a single right answer because clearly the first student who puts the right answer up will kind of shut down the discussion. With a Q&A forum, it's uh, similar to a standard forum in that it's, it is a container and there can be multiple discussion threads. But you as the instructor are the only one who can start a discussion thread. And they're called questions rather than threads because the idea is you will set up a Q&A forum, say over some readings for the course, and you will start uh, threads for a number of questions you want the students to discuss. What's unique about this forum type is that you know the students have to go into your question threads in order to participate. They will see what you post for the questions, 
but they won't be able to see other students' responses until they have responded. This is, uh, this is good in that it gives everyone a kind of a level playing field and everyone has to contribute their initial thoughts to the answering the question. But once they do that and um, the five minute editing period has, has elapsed, then the students can come back into that question thread and not only see what they posted, but what everyone else posted. And then at that point, it becomes just a regular kind of uh, extended discussion space. There are a couple of other uh, more specialized uh, forum types. With this, each person posts one discussion forum type. It's again a container where people can sp start uh, discussion threads, but everyone gets the ability to start one thread. And I don't use this very often, but I'm thinking, uh, you know, if you are sending students out on internships and you want the, the class to have a place to discuss their uh, internship experiences, you might want to have it a forum where each person starts a discussion forum thread over their internship experience. And then all of the further posts and uh, feedback from the class takes place within that uh, person's discussion thread. Uh, there's also the ability to set up a standard form in more of a blog-like format. So again, um, people, anyone in the course can start a discussion thread, but instead of showing up as a discussion uh, forum post, it shows up as a blog entry. And then any replies to those posts uh, basically function as comments would on a blog. So if you've got, if you want to set up a discussion forum where everyone is responsible for bringing in uh, current events, news stories, and talking about them, you might want to consider this blog-like format for your discussion um, forum. Um, a number of the uh, uh, settings here um, are things that we don't really need to worry about. You can specify, um, you know, maximum attachment size. The default on the discussion forum is pretty low. So if you are uh, setting up a discussion forum for students to um, upload examples of their work for a feedback kind of process, you might want to bump that up depending on the size of the files that the students are going to be sharing. Uh, subscription mode determines whether or not uh, people are getting um, emails when there are new um, when there's new activity on the forum. So the default is optional subscription. It leaves it up to the individual as to whether or not they want to subscribe to the forum and get email uh, announcements. You can force everyone to get an email every time someone posts. Be very careful with that. It's very easy to pa spam everyone's inbox. Um, auto subscription is kind of a, a intermediate case. With auto subscription, everyone starts out subscribed, but they have the ability to unsubscribe if they feel like they're getting too much email notification. The email notification is really uh, most useful for discussion forums where you've got an expectation for low activity. So if you've set up a course discussions forum um, and um, you know there's not likely to be a lot of, um, of traffic, you might want to start off with this auto subscription so that when someone does post a question to the uh, um, course discussion forum, everyone in the course gets an email to know that there's something there to look at. Um, I've never had to worry about blocking a student who's been too active on the discussion forum, but you know, if that is a situation you might be exposed to, you can look into that. Um, grading um, is uh, an issue that it can be complicated. You have the ability to turn ratings on, and that way uh, all of the discussion forum posts, at least those within a particular range, if you have turned that feature on, have a little pull-down menu that uh, where you can um, 
give a rating to the individual uh, posts. I won't talk about it here in this video, but the big question then becomes, given that students can post different numbers of, of contributions to the forum, how to take those ratings and tally them up into some grade. But you could set up a 10-point scale. That way you'd have a, a little uh, rating scale of 0 to 10 um, that you could apply to every single post that's in the forum. You can show or hide. You can set up the forum, have it hidden, and then show it when it's ready. Uh, I would not recommend uh, adding an access restriction. Um, if you have completion tracking turned on, then you can decide whether or not you want uh, completion tracking to uh, be monitored for students on the discussion forum. Um, if you do have activity completion turned on, the default is to have students' ability to manual and mark them. But you can instead have Moodle um, mark um, the student has having completed the um, the activity when they have uh, you know posted five things in the forum and uh, you know f at least four of those need to be replies and so forth and then if I click save and display what you'll see is the uh, discussion forum will be created. In this case, it is a Q&A forum, so you as the instructor have the ability to add a new question. You click add the new question, and uh, you know, question one, blah, 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 blah. Uh, read and comment on this, and um, post to the forum, and you will have a question. If you do use the Q&A forum type, be sure to add in question threads as the instructor because students don't have the ability to do anything unless there are questions there.